CMF Series 25 dropped in January of 2024. Even though many people look forward to these non-IP CMF waves, was it actually worth the wait? So let's go through all these figures and figure out was it worth the wait? A top tier figure from this wave is the film noir detective. This figure feels right out of an old movie. Now this figure doesn't really fit with many other figures, but personally I think he's just a fun figure to collect or to build mocks with. I can't wait to see people build black and white mocks and have this figure in it. He comes with a magnifying glass and a red herring. Now for the record, this isn't the first time we got the red fish piece. It did come with family reunion celebration. I absolutely love that they added in the collar of his jacket. It just adds so much to this figure. Personally, I would love more figures in the style. I I think it'd be a lot of fun if we got one with like a black and white saxophone. Overall, I think he's a great figure from series 25. Now one figure that when I first saw her in the images, I didn't really like, but I've grown to love since then, and that's the Harpy. She has gold claws, purple wings, and a purple hairpiece. Her legs aren't your normal legs, and have gold claw printing on the feet. One of the reasons I've actually started to like her is because she is from Greek slash Roman mythology. When I saw her at first and kind of didn't really know what she was a part of, and I thought she was just this winged creature, it just didn't have too much of a draw to me. We've actually gotten a whole bunch of Greek slash Roman mythology figures throughout the CMF lines. So them continuing that in series 25 is just really cool to me. If you want to know about all the Greek slash Roman CMF figures, I actually did a full video on that. It just feels like there's something off about her, but I can't fully place my finger on what it is. I think where this figure loses points for me is if you didn't know that Greek connection, you wouldn't really care about her. She's just some random brightly colored flying woman. The next figure is the Mushroom Sprite. Now this figure is pretty simple overall and is mostly just white with a little bit of printing. She does come with a butterfly and a little skirt piece. What makes her so special is the mushroom cap on her head. Now this figure is definitely connected to the Forest Elf from series 22. Even if these Two figures aren't connected, they're both perfect to use in mocks together. I mean, you can have a little enchanted forest and put both these figures in it, and it'll look amazing. One small connection, and I have no clue whether or not this is true, is on the acorn boy, he comes with a little mushroom piece. Two series later, we get the mushroom girl. Now, the mushroom piece has a smiley face on it and eyes, so I kind of wonder if that mushroom piece is supposed to represent this, like, mushroom girl, but when she was younger. Like, maybe the acorn boy is her older brother. Even with all that on her own she is an amazing figure she has very simple printing but i think it works very well for this figure i don't think they needed to overdo the printing on it overall great figure i definitely think she is one of the better figures from the cmf line the sprinter is the next figure we get in this wave he comes with a first place podium stand prosthetic legs and a gold medal he has bib printing with the number 2024 on it this is a reference to the year that he came out he has a dual printed head with one side happy and the other side with sweat coming down his face now we've gotten a bunch of sports mini figures in the past but the one he reminds me most of is the wheelchair eraser from series 22. They both just have a very similar color scheme. Honestly, this figure just doesn't do a lot for me. If you collect the sports figures or run, I'd say yeah, grab this figure. I just feel like in general, he's a bit too niche to do a lot with. Another figure from this wave is the Triceratops costume fan. If you're building in Jurassic Park, this figure would go great in there. This figure is very similar to the T-Rex costume fan that we got from series 24. It's cool that LEGO is starting like a sub theme of the costume figures with these dinosaur figures. For those who are building up an orc army from CMF series 24, his parts are the same color. So you can use his arms, torso, legs, and hey, even his tail to mix and match with your orcs to expand your army. I will say the Triceratops mask turned around could be used as some great foliage. Overall, great figure. You know exactly what he is. He's good to add to those collections and he's got some good printing all around. In every CMF line, there's a handful of figures that are neither the best figures in the wave or awful. And I think this is one of those figures. Like that's not a bad thing. You need those kind of like average figures. Overall, the printing's good, but I don't think he's like one of the best figures in this wave. Now, one figure that gets a lot of points from me is the Fierce Barbarian. She is so good in my opinion, and they just did a fantastic job on her. In my opinion, this figure is a very good army builder. If you're building up a barbarian horde, her legs, arms, and torso are just perfect for that. I absolutely love that you can switch her face and she has war paint on the other side of it. Like for more Viking and barbarian figures, I wish they would do this because it's so cool to be able to have like that normal normal face or have one with war paint. Now this figure is actually connected to the Barbarian from series 11. If you look at both of their belt buckles, they have the same symbol on it. I absolutely love it when one figure is connected to another, and so this figure showing up 14 series later with that same belt buckle symbol is just awesome to me. I absolutely love the sword she comes with. Personally, I think the sword would have looked just as good with the Basil the Bat Lord. Now this is the first time getting it in these more realistic colors. I think I can speak for the castle community when I say we love it when we get new armor and weapons that we can customize our figures more with. Personally, when I first saw this figure, I thought she was cool, but I was like, all right, you know, whatever, another kind of barbarian type figure got her 
absolutely loved her. I've been trying to buy up as many as possible to army build with her. Personally, I don't think the Fierce Barbarian has been getting as much love as she should be. I think she's a 10 out of 10 figure and I highly recommend picking her up. The next figure I want to take a look at is the Pet Groomer. She comes with an Afghan Hound Dog. We haven't got this style of Lego dog before, so it's really cool to be able to add this to your Lego dog collection. Her hair piece is also new and has a hearing aid in it. She has an apron printing, and at the bottom of it, you can see dog hair on the apron, which is just a fun touch. She's an all right figure. I don't think there's anything really bad about her. The new dog mold's really cool. I think my biggest problem with her is it just feels like she should have just come in a city set. I feel like they could have just made a modular building or city set that was a pet groomer and added her in. I just don't feel like she really needed to be a figure in the CMF line. Next up is the fitness instructor. Now don't get her confused with the fitness instructor from series 5. She definitely goes well with that figure and the weightlifter from series 2. She comes with a drink that says Vita Rush. Now this reference has been made in many LEGO City sets. It's kind of like Octane. It's a brand that's in the LEGO world, but it's for drinks. On top of the Vita Rush, she also has a 10 pound weight. On her arm is a tattoo of a flower. I absolutely love that they're adding in more figures with tattoos because it's just another way that you can customize a figure. She does suffer from something we've seen on a lot of figures lately, which is the weird miscoloring on her torso. Like if you look at her stomach, it's not the same yellow as on her arms. Besides that, she's a well-printed figure, but I had the same issue with her as I do with the dog groomer. I think she just would have been better in a city set. For the train fans out there, the train kid is perfect for you. This is another figure that goes with all the other costume figures we've gotten in the CMF line. This is actually the first time we've seen his hat in medium blue. Before that, it was always brown. I do really love this printed part in the front of the train that has the gold 25 on it. He has blue overalls and is basically a kid dressed up as a train conductor. The molded train he wears can be rolled around. I think the people who like costume figures or trains will really like this fig. I will say this figure is a lot like the dinosaur guy. He's not bad, but he's not great. The train PC wears is pretty cool though. For you gamers out there, this next one is one you're definitely going to want to pick up. The eSports gamer comes with an RGB mouse and keyboard. She also comes with a trophy and headphones. Her printing job is honestly amazing. She even has this awesome printing on the side of her leg. I also just love it when we get dual molded arms. Now I know a lot of people look at her torso and immediately think Black Falcons, which I definitely understand. I do think the torso would look great as a castle or even as a space faction. Like anytime we get a torso with a symbol like that, it's perfect for any type of faction. Overall, she's a good figure from this line. This next figure I feel like has gotten a lot of praise for the wrong reasons. The Goat Herder is the newest addition to LEGO Castle. Now everyone's been trying to get this figure for one reason the goat that comes with it. Now, if you don't know why a goat matters to LEGO fans so much, well, here's why. We haven't seen a goat in over 10 years, and last time we got it, it came in LEGO Kingdom's Mill Village Raid. That goat alone was going for about $50 to $100 on the aftermarket, because the goat came in only that set and made it highly sought after. Also, people love animals they can use in mocks. Mold-wise, the two goats are identical. The only difference is the new one is plain white. But why do I think this figure has been getting love for the wrong reason? Because personally, I think not enough people are showing love to the figure that came with it. First, First off, it is another figure you can add to your medieval village. Secondly, I love the printing on this figure. In some ways, it's simple, but also has so much potential. Like, I love the dual molded legs and the patch on his sleeve. I also love his, like, goat wool vest. It may be a small detail, but I absolutely love his pouch. I feel like you can't have a castle civilian figure without a pouch. Like, it goes back to the first castle civilian figure we had that had a pouch on his waist. And since then, I feel like so many of them have had pouches. Now, it would have been fun if they brought back the civilian hood or a brown forceman's cap but I honestly have no problem with them using a brown hood. This figure will also go very well with the troubadour slash bard we got in series 22. I think this figure will be very versatile for castle fans though. Well, first off, that torso is perfect to miss and match with your force men or dark forest figures. On top of that, you can fig barf a bunch more civilian figs. If you have any of the new castle stuff like the 90th anniversary castle or Magisto's hut, you need this figure to go with it. This is the thing. They could have given us the goat and a really crappy figure and we all would have bought in so many of it because we wanted that goat. But getting the common we got is just amazing. And honestly, I have no complaints about this figure. All right, it's finally time to talk about the Vampire Knight. All right, there ain't no way I am calling him the Vampire Knight. All right, guys, this is Basil the Bat Lord. This is the Bat Lord, the leader of the Fright Knights, and probably one of the coolest figures in all of LEGO Castle. And we will show him the respect he deserves. Like, LEGO calling him the Vampire Knight is like calling Magisto a blue wizard. Yeah, it's technically true but he is so much cooler than that. Now, my biggest problem with this figure is he doesn't come in a set. And I know that's super nitpicky, but let me quickly explain. Now, I love us getting him in the CMF line because CMF figures are always way more detailed, but I would have personally loved it if we'd gotten a Fright Night set 
with Basil and Willow and a bunch of other Fright Nights in it. Us getting him as a CMF just means a lot lower chance of us getting him in a set. People have always asked me in the past, what do I want them to bring back for new LEGO Castle? And one of the answers I've given a lot is I want them to bring back Basil the Batlord. Basil the Batlord has become one of my favorite characters in LEGO Castle, so us getting a new version of him, oh, it just makes me so happy. Now this isn't the first time we've seen the Fright Nights return. We did get the Fright Night Ghost in Series 19, who personally matches very well with the new Basil. They both do use an updated Fright Nights logo. Basil the Batlord was also mentioned in the 90th anniversary Lion Knight's Castle. It just makes me so happy that they referenced the figure and then gave it to us. Let's hope some of those other references come true. Now so many people have asked me, do I like the new Basil or the old Basil better? For starters, I like the old Basil for Old Castle, and I like the new Basil for New Castle. Is it just me or did Basil the Batlord go from Villain of the Week to Oh my gosh, all the kingdoms better band together to fight Basil the Batlord because he's coming and he's an endgame level threat. I absolutely love this new Basil the Batlord. I think the updated printing to his torso looks so good. And that arm and leg printing is just a cherry on top. With an updated Basil the Batlord, the biggest thing I wanted was an updated cape. And wow, did we get an updated cape. First off, the material for it is really good. But the fact that it's red in the front and gray with the logo on it in the back is just amazing. Basil the Batlord is supposed to be a scary character, and I love the old helmet, but I feel like the new one just does such a better job of that. I really like on the new helmet how the wings aren't just coming off to the side. Now one new addition to Basil the Batlord is they gave him more of a spiky feel. You definitely see it in the comparison between the old and new shield. You also see it on the cape with those red spikes, and then the bottom of his axe comes to a spike. I definitely feel like this goes very well with his character and was a great addition. It's also awesome to see the comeback of the oval shields. We haven't gotten those in any of the new castle sets yet, but I feel like Basil the Batlord was the perfect figure to bring them back with. On the original figure, Basil the Batlord had this magnificent mustache. So I'm very very happy that they kept that part of him for the new figure. Now when I first saw the new figure, I thought I'd have personally preferred that they used the yellow head, but more recently I've warmed up to the idea for a few reasons. First off, the new head looks really good and I especially love the eyes. Also, if you ever played LEGO Racers, in that Basil the Batlord was a vampire. So hey, maybe on the original figure they were trying to make him a vampire, or maybe the designer of this figure was inspired by the LEGO Racers version. Also there could be a lore reason why, maybe Will the Witch transformed Basil into this more frightening character. But no matter what, with the helmet on, he looks so good. Honestly, this is a figure you need for your castle collection. He just fits in so great with all these new castle sets we've been getting. This figure does give me hope that we might get a Will the Witch some point soon. I definitely feel like she's a character that we need a remake of. I'm going to make a giant claim. I personally think this is the best figure of 2024 and the year just started. All I'm going to say is when we see lists of top 10 minifigures of 2024, this figure will have made it onto them. This is all 12 figures you can get in CMF Series 25. Overall, we did get some major highlights from this wave, but to me, it feels like something is missing in the series. One of the big reasons I think I feel this way is because we didn't get any space figures. Now I know this is because the next CMF wave is solely dedicated to space figures, and trust me, I am very excited about that. But at the same time, having space figures helped balance out the past CMF waves and added some variety. There are so many great figures and new parts, I definitely think this wave was worth the wait. But do I think it's the best CMF wave we've ever gotten? Of course not. I think we've gotten much better ones in the past. Let's be honest though, LEGO definitely dangled a goat and Basil the Batlord in front of us and it definitely distracted us. What's your favorite figure from this wave and do you think the CMF wave was worth the wait?